Actresses and actresses and Larry, I want you to meet Salvador Dali. And, and there he was, sitting in the, in the audience with his famous mustache. And looking very grand. And we all uh, uh, gathered around and we were introduced. And I said to myself, this is the sign that Lamana has arrived you know, when Salvador Dali comes to see what is going on. So that was uh, my first experience there. Uh, Ellen uh, and a person called Ellen said, I was the, f her f the first actor that she ever hired who had a my name is Ozzy Rodriguez. I'm the director of the La Mama Archive, Ellen Stewart Private Collection. I'm also a resident director at La Mama. I met Ellen Stewart in 1967. I was harassed and cajoled into performing a show at the then La Mama at 122 Second Avenue by Nelly Vivas. Uh, on the occasion of our meeting, I was rehearsing something in a space that I had never seen before. And uh, being a graduate of performing arts and also Hunter College, my idea of what off-off-Broadway was is completely erroneous and misguided. Uh, we were in the presence of uh, many people at the time, and we were rehearsing at 122 when this woman came in and started making all this racket. Uh, I hear this clang, 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 and finally I just stopped and I said, Madam, could you come back and clean a little bit later? We are in the process of rehearsing with artists who are trying to get a show together here. And uh, she turned around and to much to my shock, she started yelling at me saying, you better leave this place damn clean when you leave because yesterday you left a mess and I am not cleaning it up after you. I then realized that what she had been doing was cleaning the coffee pot uh, and she had an armful of bracelets which were making all the noise when she was doing this thing. I had no idea who she was. I really thought she was the cleaning lady. So the woman finally left. A little bit later, Nellie Rivas walked into the thing and I, I was outraged and I was furious. And I said, Nellie, would you please tell the cleaning lady that you can't be screaming at me? I wasn't here yesterday. I had nothing to do with cleaning this place. And everything says, well, cleaning lady, what are you talking about? I said, the woman who was just in here screaming at me. She says, oh my God, that was Ellen. So she said, come quickly. She grabbed me, took me outside, ran, we ran down the street and met up with Ellen, who happened to be walking with Tom Horrigan at the time. And she said, Ellen, this is Ozzy. I've been telling you about him. I want to introduce him to you and everything else. She turned around and she said, well, honey, I'm very happy to meet you, but you better leave the place clean. In the early 70s, very early 70s. And then I went to Ellen. Ellen had a minor bird named Kiki, a black, big, black minor bird. And I took a copy of the music with me and I said, Ellen, I'm going to call you. This is, you hand it to me. I have to direct this piece. I, 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 you know, the company is willing to work with me, but I don't know what else I can do, etc. And she said, well, tell me about it. So I started to tell her about it. I played the music for her. And she listened to the music. The minute the music started, the birds started singing. All the minor birds began singing. And she turned around and she looked at me and she said, Well, honey, the birds love it, so I'm going to have to do it. And that was interesting. I don't really have a lot of stories about Ellen, uh, mainly because I it was very shy around Ellen. You know, she was such a. a a powerful personality, and I, I'm a very shy person, so I'm also always sort of in awe of her. Um, I didn't really do much talking <laughs> um, around her, but, um, but I was so happy that you know, I got booked to do a play here at my mom. so excited and right the first day I did her open and Ellen rang the bell and I introduced her play and, and that was the seven year vacation was the, the first play I did there in the club and, and uh, well I do remember um, being very impressed when I 
uh, s- sign the contract, you know, to do the, the play that, um, that it said in the contract that there could be nothing green on stage. Um, and Helen and I were very impressed by that. You know, Helen was doing sets for the play, for the seven year vacation. She did sets for all my plays. Um, so we realized that there could be nothing green <laughs> in the set, uh, which was easy to do, you know, help because Helen's sets often are just you know, black and white. You know. She asked me to do Seven of Thieves. She said, we need, you, we need someone to play a demigod. It has to be a big person. And you're the biggest person I know. And I said, reluctantly said, okay, all right, I'll do it. And then when she brought me to the theater, she showed me this cargo net, which was about 30 feet in the air. And she said, you have to climb this cargo net get struck by lightning and fall all the way down to the ground. And I said, you're kidding. And she looked at me and smiled and said, no. (laughs) That's another Ellen story. Of course I did it. You you were there, Seven Against Thebes. Yes, and I only hurt myself once because I missed the rope and really fell and hit myself on the ground. That was okay. No, that's not true. Because we toured with this show in in the Balkans. And the last place we went to was... um, Belgrade. And uh, when they had to put me somewhere and bury me and burn me with fire, there was no place for them to put me. So... uh, I found an opening under the stage that would open up that I could fall into and they could pretend I was buried or whatever. So without any practice whatsoever, it opened up, I fell in and uh, my foot bled for about three days. <laughs> so, but she was happy that I was able to, they were able to get rid of my body anyway. And not to mention the fact that, um, let's see, the first time, the first place we did it in the Balkans was at a city called, um, oh, I don't remember, it was outside of uh, Vienna. And uh, my body is supposed to get, you know, yes, yes, that's it. And um, the guys were supposed to burn my body and they didn't have any fake fire or anything, so. She had these four members of the cast learn how to breathe fire so they could blow on me and burn me to death. And once again, I said, you're kidding. And she said, no. And that's what they did. And fortunately, I was not burned to death. So I survived. I'm here to talk about it. Coffee House, welcome to Ellen 100th birthday. <laughs> so the 
original day is not today. It's the 7th, but this is the closest we could have done it. But today is still November 2nd, which is the Day of the Dead. So we remember Ellen and the other people that passed away, like Tim, that we just lost a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so when I knew that I have to do Ellen Coffee House, freaked out a little bit. Yeah, and I said, how do we squeeze Ellen in two hours, yeah? What should I do? Um, what was not said already or shown or known? And I said, I'm just going to put the word out there and see what people say. So I mentioned it on um, social media, and right away, everybody said, can we be on stage? Can we tell our story? Can we do something? And then I knew that this is what I'm not supposed to do. <laughs> Nobody's going on stage. The only one who's going to be talking here today is Ellen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she hated talking, and if she will ever hear people talking about her, she will, I'll be dead. <laughs> yeah, so, so Ellen is going to be the only one who's doing, who will talk, and I decided that we'll do it just the way she loved it. Music, dance, puppets. So we gonna um, re we remounted five scenes of her shows by chronological order from the Cotton Club, which she put together to the Greeks. And then I asked a few puppeteers um, to create story or scene, short scene based on the pap and the pushcart in the early days in New York. So we're gonna have two scenes and um, two animation film. And um, then you're going to see a few footage that you've never seen before. And what you saw before on the stage and in the lobby, it's just Ellen Private, I much call Ellen a, my Ellen's memory or story. And I asked everybody also, whoever wants to do it, they can still send me like two minutes or three minutes at the max of Ellen's story. We post them every day. And the only thing that we ask her is that you look at the camera so we know who is talking. And also that it's not going to be forever. That it's going to be like two or three minutes. And uh, we're going to post them again and again, and the mama going to put them on the website, and we're going to use them in other platforms. And I think I said enough. Happy birthday!
Every moment is precious, and it is how and what you do with the moment is the art. The energy, the energy that comes from you when you are and you let yourself and you allow yourself to be exposed and to receive the beauty by which you are surrounded everywhere, everywhere. That's art.
designer at Saks to becoming uh, the impresario and founder of La Mama. Um, that's the story. The health department had been called and had been told that a negress had entertained 16 white men in five hours. <laughs> and they wanted to stop put to this. So we explained to him, because a lot of the guys were down there, what we were doing, and it was true. They were coming and going all the time. But, uh, and he happened to have been in vaudeville in his early days, and so, he was sympathetic. He said he knew how to stop this kind of harassment, that I must have a license. How could I get a license? And for what? He says, be a restaurant, because if you serve a cup of coffee, you are a restaurant. And he said, I will give you the license. What's the name? So one of the fellows said, Mama. And uh, he wrote Mama. And they were teasing. They said, oh, it's not fancy enough. Call it La Mama. So he wrote La Mama. And I got restaurant license in the name of La Mama. And we've been La Mama ever since.
Thank you, the Rod Rogers Dance Company, Jamal Green, Jamia Nicole Jordan, Nami Kagami, Cecilia Dennis, Jindaya Dash, Laura Sion, the La Mama Band, Richard Mann on piano, Harry, I'm sorry, Richie Cohen on horn, Harry Mann on piano and Oha Kapuya on bass. This is the Ellen Stewart's original Satin Doll presented in 1975, choreographed by Laurel Bicham and restaged and remounted by me, Kim Greer Martinez of the Artistic, the Artistic Director of the Rod Rogers Dance Company. Thank you. When we started down in this little basement that could hold 25 people. It was on 9th Street? 9th Street, there was a big crowd. I didn't know how to start the show. 
And somebody gave me a bell and said, just ring the bell and say something. And that's the bell. with all of you. <laughs> you are our community. You are my community. And and you keep us going. So from Adrian Kennedy. She soon became the most influential person in the theater, American and international. No one else comes close to what she achieved. She brought together people from all over the world. She had the power to bring great attention to a writer's work. When a rat's mass was done at La Mama in 1970, people lined up around the corner to see it. And, the, and when the more controversial opera version opened in 1974, she still had the power to bring it to the attention of forces. The Broadway giants, Merrick, Prince, the British giants, Cameron Mackintosh wielded power in their domains, but no one can touch the passionate, international, influential power Ellen has had over theatrical productions, directing, and writing since the early 70s. It is so vast.
And ladies and gentlemen, that was the opening uh, fertility dance from Ellen Stewart's Mythos Oedipus, the very first of her Greek plays that was first played in Delphi, Greece in 1985. Um, I'll be announcing the names of some of the other Greek shows. I think you need to know how Ellen taught us how to pronounce the name so you'll recognize them. It's not Oedipus, it's Oedipus. It's not Antigone, it's Antigone. It's not Perseus, it's Perseus. The oracle is not Pythia, it's Pythia. And the god Zeus is not Zeus, of course, it's Zeus. Uh, music by Liz Suedos and the Great Jones Repertory Company, uh, 1985, Mythos Oedipus. Oh, uh, choreographed by Min Tanaka. On April 2nd, 1969, La Mama opened the doors of its new home, no longer a loft, but a four-story building accommodating two theaters. NET returned on the opening day of the new theater and asked Ellen Stewart about the development of La Mama. Well, today, at this moment, Hopefully, they're going to put the front doors onto the mama. Hopefully, they'll remove the scaffolding and all of the plaster bags and the wheelbarrows and the cement mixers that are on the first floor where we're supposed to perform at 10.30. Hopefully, where we're supposed to be able to get two tape recorders on credit and they haven't allowed us to have them yet. They'll let us have them because we need them for tonight's performance, which I have to go and see call if they've had a change of mind. Hopefully, it won't get cold, although it's raining now, because Con Edison neglected to fix a gas main in the streets, and they say it probably won't be fixed, so that means we probably won't have heat. Hopefully, we'll have one John in, and the dimmer boards attached. I miss all of the things that are happening. My name is Vid Hoseich. I came from Prague to New York in 1979. Believe it or not, I was a, an actor on salary over there. Uh -huh. And I had a heavy bag with me and a heavy accent, and I thought I might never get paid to act again. Uh, but people told me about this wonderful place called La Mama, and I wanted to see a show. They brought the birds, Peter Brooks birds. It was completely sold out and there was this woman standing at the door and I asked her whether there would be some tickets later on and she looked at me and I told her I was from Prague, an actor, and she started telling me a story how she was going to bring a theater, my favorite theater from Prague and couldn't because she didn't have enough money for it and that I was La Mamba people and I could come in for free. <laughs> <coughs> and, and that's enough about you. Uh, now let's hear my story. Uh, look at this place, what is it? Sex Fifth Avenue, never heard the name. Uh, nobody would give me a job, so let me pray 
in this church across the street. And let's go back. Ah, hello, they gave me a job at Sex Fifth Avenue. And, uh, and who, who are you? Uh, who are you and where are you? I think uh, your co-player is... <laughs> scheme and I'm going to change my hair. Here we go. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to get my own push card, my own house, my own little theater. Hey, big guy, can we have, oh, <clears throat> I said little theater, but this is a little bit too little, okay? <clears throat> I like this place. It, it's a bit disheveled, but uh, hey, uh, how much do you want for it? Thirty-five thousand. I'll pay ten. Um, and big guy, help me. Uh, let's put a, a theater. Needs a backdrop. And the producer needs a backstory. So uh, let's have a backdrop. Uh, not bad. Not bad. It's a bit drafty here. Oh, it doesn't have a roof. Uh, well. Uh, Anybody could contribute to uh, fix the roof out there. I just need 25,000. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll make sure that that check doesn't bounce, okay? And uh, big guy, let's fix it. Let's see. Uh, oh. uh, hey, 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 you're building me in. in here. <laughs> Careful about that. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, right. actually my mother's, my real mother's toy theater, and I played with it as a child. Uh, and I'll just hang out there, and curtain time, ding, 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 ding. Oh, this is, this is pretty good, but it's scary. Oh, let's have some light on it, yes. Let's change the background, okay. Oh, that's better. That's cheerier. But uh, you know what? People don't like me here, and they think I am running a bordello with all those disheveled young men coming in and out. And it's too small anyway. Let me look for another place, okay? And I think I'll change my color scheme, and I think I'll change my... Here, oh, this is, oh, oh, this is a mess. Oh, look at all this stuff over here. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, no. <coughs> oh, not bad. And I'll change my hairdo. <laughs> and, Tim? Tim oh. the 
sound man? Sure, Ray Moore, Hook. Sure, Ray Moore, Lick. Oh, is that that witch from Saks Fifth Avenue? Sure, Ray Moore, Ray Cherna, Yira, Aush, Oh, no, 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 that's. that's. that's Ron Jones. He was a great witch in that weird. A weird puppet play that that Czech guy put on in my place. <laughs> um, and uh, you know what? Uh, I don't. Uh, uh, you know what? Why don't you bring that weird show back for three more weeks? Uh, Ellen, excuse me, but uh, you know the actors. What do you mean, the actors knocking over the backdrops? Uh, uh, oh, you mean they should get paid? Of course I'll give you money for that. And, 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 who are you? Oh, uh, uh, I'm the stage manager, Martin, and I need to fix the light overnight. Uh, can I stay here overnight? All right, why not? Be careful. <laughs> Five more minutes, Mama. Five more minutes. That's not me, Martin. That's the fire department. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What is this? Oh, what is this? What, what, what is this piece of fabric? Oh, that's fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, more, more fire. No, 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 no. And the scenery is falling over. Help! Help! Help, someone. Help, please. Uh, I'll proceed here. No, no. Uh, well, Alan, uh, we didn't burn your house. Uh, just our proscenium. Well, you better, big guy. Uh, I think, I think I better be going. <laughs> very much that it is possible to communicate with every human being upon this earth. We are all the same person. We are all the same entity. The was is the is, and the is is the was. Our center is the universe. It is as if the earth itself is one gigantic umbilical cord, and all you have to do is to tune into this center.
That was Creon's last song from Antigone, the King Creon singing and lamenting the death of his wife, Erodice, which was the harbinger of the end of Thebes, and the music by Liz Suedos. The song, O Posidonius, from um, Perseus, uh, the oracle uh, asking the god Poseidon to take 
uh, Androm Andromeda for, to save the city of Ethiopia, the civilization of Ethiopia. With that show, Ellen wanted to send a message that the lineage of Greek heroes, Helen and the House of Atreus, all had a black African maternal line uh, from Ethiopia. Oh, and then the birds are from uh, Hercules, uh, the sixth labor. Hercules drives away those Stymphalian birds. I'm very happy tonight. I'm very happy tonight. and that circle was for Ellen's last show, Asclepius. She wrote the music for that show and some of the most beautiful words, uh, which I think you'll see some of them. Uh, you should know that she was very ill when she made that show and directed it from a hospital bed brought here into this theater along with her nurse and oxygen tanks. And it's significant that her very last show was about healing. So the first song we will hear is Phlegias, uh, the king, uh, father of Coronas, lamenting the death of his daughter in the Asclepius story. Music by Ellen.
Ramadan. Uh, welcome to La Mama at the Annex. We thank you so much that you've come. And the great Jones Company, hi Conoco, <laughs> and La Mama are very pleased to invite you to see this performance of Aeschylus. Aeschylus, you know, or you might not know, was the Greek and is the Greek god of daughter, doctors. He is the reason that doctors exist today. And if you see on many times the doctor's uniform, you see a staff with a stick on it. That was his sign. And it has come down until now, his sign. You're going to see how that sign got made. We're proud to try to do that for you. But tonight you will see Aeschylus. He's never been written about before. He's not had a play done about him. So we hope we can do him a little justice. It is so nice to talk to you, and so nice that you would want to come and see what we are attempting to do. So we're going to start now. We thank everybody who has helped to make, hi babies. This, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you know who I'm talking to. Right. Everybody who has helped make this performance possible. <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> Benjamin will now sing the Coronas song from Asclepius. Coronas, falling and intoxicated by the sunlight, wishes to take a ride in Apollo's chariot of fire.
Your mama is a lot of people. And many persons say, well, how does it keep going? But I know at this moment, every corner of the earth, there are people whose energies and heartbeats, some part of which is directed towards La Mama. And with that kind of thing holding up, honey, we don't sink. Okay. <laughs>